Good morning. Welcome to A Brown Bag Gentleman. My name is Scott, and today's shave, Sterling Executive Man. I'll let you see those ingredients up there close too, with a, with the, with the, at the bottom there. I see the tallow, the lanolin, and shea butter being prominently displayed. Ooh, that promises to be what good. And of course, the Blackland Vector Razor. So single edge artisan style bl blade goes in this, and we're gonna do that part next. So let's do that. So I'm unscrewing it here. Yes, I put a gasket. It didn't come with the gasket. I put it in just because I got a bag of them. So I tend to do that, especially on expensive razors. I tend to do that. So take that off, take the handle off. So here's the, the head and base plate. So and let's see, I have to look at this. Bear with me. I'm going to get my glasses on because I want to put it back together right too. It's such a small little head piece that, you know, a pair of glasses would be nice. But look how thin and small that, that head is. So we're going to pull it apart. And that's what it looks like. So there's yeah, there's pins in the top post and of course uh and not a round post, it's like a rectangular post. It's rounded on the edges, and that's where the basically they, they have the teeth for screwing it in. So really inventive design. You see the little rectangular hole it goes into, and of course the pins go in there, and that's how it holds the blade. So I'm just gonna put this down right here. Put that right there. I'm gonna grab my blade. So yes, this is the same blade I used last week. I've used it four times. Yeah, and these blades do last so much longer. So yeah, when I, oops, I'm not gonna put it in the base, I put it in the top cap. So when I'm shaving with this, I do these these razors back to back so I can use up this blade more. <laughs> so let's see here. I think this goes like this. Okay, sorry, I'm, this is rounded. I think the rounded piece is back. So now that I've already got it messed up here. Let me, all right, sorry. So I'll put that here. And see how the head holds that so the post goes through the middle so they can make it, the head's up that much smaller. They figured out to do that and that was just fantastic. Hats off to the design. Okay, so now here's the base plate. I think it goes like this. Oh, right the first time. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I was spry a little out when I put the base plate on there. It just it's, it's, it's awkward to, to work with, so I do apologize, but I'm not doing it again. <laughs> All right. So here we go. The blade is in there. So let's go ahead and hold that down. Grab in my little gasket. Put it over that little pin right there. See that? Whoop. <clears throat> Sorry, the handle rolled onto the floor from the countertop. There we go. Stainless steel, not really worried about any damage. <laughs> and it screws onto the base, onto that pin very well. Um, I thought I might have more problems with it because it's not fully threaded like a you know, round thing and all that. It's only on the sides because I've dealt with that type of design before on other pieces of equipment in my garage, but never in a razor. Uh, but no, actually, it's it doesn't really. It's really not hard to to you know to, to line it up and screw it in, and you're, you're nervous about you know stripping the, the threads or anything. But no, I've I've never had a problem with it. Okay, there we go. And I'm I'm giving it a little tauntness. I'm just gonna you know give it a little tweak there, just make sure it's nice and snug in the top especially against that gasket. And looks wise, yeah, the, the gasket does detract from looks because that is a gorgeous razor. It is absolutely is sleek and just very nice. And this, you know, see that the, 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 the way they did the simple barber pole style cuttings in there, it's enough. I've never really had an issue with soapy hands do that to work with it. And so yeah, we're gonna work with that. Oh, comment too, now that I have the new lighting here, up a little brighter in here, does it help or do you rather see less of my face? I mean, I understand. <laughs> so, so I'm just curious what y'all think. So, whoops, I'm sorry. I just took the lid off of this without showing you what I got. Yo, I've already showed you the exact thing. Let me just do that again. So we got this. This soap is a little older. See, it's a little brown around the edges. Yeah, this, this puck's a few years old. And I'm going to take my brush, which is my, yeah, this is my, the, the Phoenix handle brush with the, oh, again, Sinbad, not in this, like I used last week, Sinbad, not in the other brush. One, two, three. Ah, that's good enough. And I'm not going to squeeze it out this time. I've just checked it three times and I'm going to lather in here. So yes, I'm not using a sample today. I'm using one of my, my real full size soaps just because this is what I felt like doing today. I wanted to do this. Six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Seventy at this point. A 
Okay, that's 100. So I load it with 100 swirls. And okay, there's the soap. And of course, this, I let my soaps dry out. I'm gonna put that on the cap. And all I'm gonna do is I'm putting it right up here. So I do not close up my soap because I rotate my soaps. Back when I used one soap, and that's all I went about one of them at a time, then yes, I could put a cap on that because I'm using it every day. So it never got a like an issue with mold going bad or anything. Never had an issue. But since I only gonna use these soaps like a week at a time, I leave it up there and basically the last day I use it, which is Thursdays usually, it'll it'll dry through Friday and Saturday and I'll and then I'll recap it like Saturday night or Sunday or something like that. But right now, I see I did just step out of the shower today. So I'm going to a work function. So yeah, so I don't have to wash my face like normal. I'm just gonna but I am gonna dampen it. I just because it's been five minutes since I got out of the shower, so just dampen my, my face a little bit. A little moisture. And we're going to face lather today. So I'm not ball lathering. Although I've got my scuttle sitting up there for next week, I think. But I wanted to face lather today just because I just so rarely do it. And I know a lot of you guys probably do face shave or face lather rather. So yeah, let's face lather today. Did this for a lot of years before I went to a bowl. Now, is there any really particular differences between face lathering? A lot of people like this face lathering because you're really working it in. You're really moistening up the, the, the beard and all that, so it's, which is phenomenal. Really does a good job, but it is drippy. It's always drippy. And yes, I could have squeezed out the, the head a little bit, you know, and done that and shaken out more. But of course, you do need a certain amount of water in the brush to lather it up. Otherwise, it doesn't work as well. So a little drippiness. It's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm going to wipe off the sink area and all that too when I'm done, but be sure you are conscientious and do that so your partner doesn't have to do it behind you. <laughs> that will not go well, just saying. <laughs> there we go. And I just kind of stand in the end. That's why I like, I like a, a brush that has a flat bottom so I can just stand it up, but just, just about it's, you know, the base like that. There's some that don't, and yeah, I don't buy those because they just, I want the, there's some that I'm interested in, but yeah, in reality, unless I have a bowl that's rested in, then no. So that yeah, that lends itself to face lathering very well. But if you get if you get a brush that has the you know, rounded bottom, if your face, yeah, it's just it's, it's more of an annoyance if you try to find this place in the sink to lay it and then not have it fall into the sink or water. So yeah, it's gonna be a pain. So I'm just throwing that out there. But pass one with the vector, and see I don't know if you can see that blade gap. There's a little bit of blade gap there. Uh, there's less blade exposure than last week's um razor but there's yeah, and there's less blade gap as well but this thing is efficient whoop, there you go, whoop, whoop. <laughs> i was wondering how far i could go with that so i found out <laughs> but this is yeah, very efficient I mean, this is aggressive. And I say aggressive efficient, but I don't mean harsh. Um, I have hurt myself with this razor before. I've, I've cut myself. I got a good cut on my nose, but it's operator error, not razor error. You know, if you do a slip sideways thing, yeah, it's going to slice you. It's going to, but that's what I say. It's good technique. And no, it's, and if you do good technique, it is not bad. But boy, that just really knocked it down in the face, I can tell you. And I try to go especially light right through across that little, you know, the crease right there because that's one of the spots I can get myself. Let's see, it's a technique thing, not a razor thing, but that was comfortable. But blade feel, definitely blade feel. And I will go to say is the say is like the other last week's razor the, the, um, had uh, had more blade exposure, but I think this has more blade feel. I can definitely tell the blades there. I mean, I can definitely had blade feel in the last one too, but this one you feel it. But it's not once you've Got a razor with blade feel, and it's not, especially if it's not too harsh. Uh, then you get used to that. I like little blade feel. I, I enjoy that. I can you kind of read that, you know, basically it basically tells you to you know back off on the pressure. Don't put don't put pressure on this razor. It is you know I've got the stainless steel version, so it, yeah, it's heavier. It's not the tiny titanium so later on. I, I I prefer the heavier razors. So just yeah, just 
And you can see how I'm like holding this, my thumb is like on the balance point right there. Whoops, sorry. If I can show that to you and not drop the razor. Okay, you get the idea. It's, I don't wanna drop it, so. <laughs> Just light in here. Stretching out the skin right here. There. There we go, that did very well. Okay, yes, under the nose. And I try to make myself go just a fairly just a tick slower with this thing because it is more aggressive. So yeah, just, just to be careful with my with my um, skills there. I'm just trying to just make sure that I'm being more cautious with this because it is more aggressive, so it can reach out if I was to slip and like move it sideways, yeah, then it would get me. But so I don't want that to happen, so yeah. Just trying to practice good technique. Love the way this soap lathers up. Nice smell too. I didn't really mention the smell. And the scent profile, let's see what they say about this. Oh, so in describing this soap, it says if confidence in a $2,000 suit could be bottled, that would be it. <laughs> So that's how they describe, they're, 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 um, describe the scent. They didn't give me really a profile on that, but it's yeah, it's a it's a homage type thing. It was inspired. They say inspired by Creed Aventus. So if you look up Creed Aventus, which is yeah one of the top scents I think in the world, it has a, you know, a grapefruit base and other stuff in it, and it is wonderful. And I've got like three or four different versions of a Creed Aventus clone, we'll call them. And yes, I enjoy them, and they all they all are a little bit different. I'd be curious to see what real Creed Aventus smells like. Uh, so someday I'll we'll go in a department store just because you know, I've got all these other clones, and I know what they smell like, and they all smell a little bit different. Uh, so what does the, the, the real thing smell like? I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I've heard back when, let's see, what was it? Um, the Ken guy, the Ken, um, not Ken Surf, the other Ken uh, in shaving. He hasn't been on for over a year. But he was used to be a Creed Aventus fan, and he I think he said like the the fine aftershave version of the Creed Aventus was like the closest that he thought to the real thing. Bear with me while I pat my head. It's a little warm in this bathroom. That's after the shower and I close the door and the fan's not running to get the steam out. So yeah, it's a little warm in here. <laughs> Let's see here. Third pass against the grain. Yes, going nicely. Light touch, stretch the neck. this thing this it just you could just tell how much more it's taking off how much more it's like wanting just to slice that hair right away that those whiskers it just does such a nice job there we go I don't want to push that too much yeah because it is more aggressive instead of just splashing some water on which I'm sure this soap can take it because of, you know it's a nice all the goodies in this thing yeah let me see this got tallow and glycerin, shea butter, um, something I can't read without my glasses. Let me get my glasses on. I can tell you what's the last two ingredients there. Uh, let's see. Oh, coconut milk and 
you know, and the lanolin. So yes, and you saw the lanolin on the label there. So yeah, so we've got it. We're going to use it. There we go. And just buffing past now. Oh yeah, very nice. Super light. Yeah, that's, that's good. There we go. Hand is right up to the head there a little bit. Wow, that does such a superb job. Maybe just a little. There we go. Yep, perfect, perfect. That's what I wanted. There we go. Let me pause and wash up, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. Turning on the cold water here. I've just, of course, washed off with a warm washcloth for the residual soap off my face. Cleaned up the equipment, put it away. Running in cold water now for closing the pores. Important step, really. Whatever you're using for equipment, if you're not even switching equipment, do this step after you shave. Wash off with warm water, then close the pores with two splashes of cold water. So that's what I'm doing now, two splashes, so bear with me. Alrighty, and of course the alum has to go on there. A little blemish on my neck there, gotta get that too. There we go. Ah, yes, ah, yes. Now, what does the yellow block do? Does it really do anything versus uh, the witch hazel? Yes, um, I like. I do prefer this to witch hazel. I used witch hazel for a lot of years, but I've really switched to this. I, I use witch hazel still for like my cleaning my face, but I don't use it for a post shave at all anymore. Uh, much prefer alum, uh, even especially with an aggressive razor like I use today. Um, you'll notice a little stinging, and yes, I found a, quite a few small little stingy spots, barely, you know, just tiny little bits, not not a severe sting. If you got a big sting, you know, yeah, yeah, we went a little too aggressive on your face. So a couple little stings all over my face, no, not a big deal. And yeah, it was like all, it was all over. I just you know, could feel it, just tiny little, barely noticeable little stings. So yeah, so yes, I had a very close shave. And boy, I tell you, it feels it already. Usually, like, you know, things retract after the cold water sets in, and they're like, you know, so it so smooths out. But boy, already, it, this is feeling very smooth. And of course, let's finish it up with the matching aftershave. You can see uh, the bottle is less than half full. And let's see here, let's be generous. There we go. I stopped thinking about trying to make my aftershave last as long as the soap. I just stopped with that. Aftershaves never last as long as soap. If you have a full size soap, no. Plan on the aftershave not lasting as long. And enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Use how much you want. So yeah, I like to put it all over my neck. Wipe it off in the shirt in the front. One on my arms. Yeah, that's what I like to do. Spread the scent. And of course that will calm down. Just a classic scent. A very nice scent. Uh, definitely a you know, where, to, where to work type of scent. Yes. And it doesn't matter if you have work boots or, or a pinstripe, it doesn't matter. I think, yeah, this this just works nice. It's just very classic, clean, nice. This particular version, the, the executive man by Sterling, is balance wise, I think it leans towards, it wants to lean towards a more, just a little bit more savory, but there's definitely sweetness in it. And I just think it's balanced well. I just really like the balance of this, how it is. Not overbearing, it's not a super strong scent by any means, it's not. It is lighter. Uh, especially after it calms down here in about 15-20 minutes. Uh, it, it'll lighten right up. Uh, but really enjoyed it. See, of course, the soap. Really enjoy the Sterling soaps. What's not to like? I mean, it is tallow-based, so if you, if, if, if you don't like that, um, yes, I will tell you up front. But for those who enjoy tallow, yes, superb. Really enjoy the soap. It's one of the biggest bang for the buck soap brands out there, I think. Sterling just, just brings it. You know, they give you good quality ingredients at, at an affordable price. Not cheapest thing, not most expensive thing. Probably 
lower middle of the road price-wise compared to some of its co competitors. Just really overall, just very satisfying soap. And just wanted to present that to you today. That's what I felt like presenting today was, was that Miss Sterling soap. So hope you enjoyed and go with God.